Hey guys, it's me again, Chris. Hey guys, it's me again, Chris, and today we're gonna do a review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10. The good news is it's not gonna be as pathetic as my iPhone SE review because this time we actually have a sample. So before we proceed, unfortunately, I do not have an iPhone SE to show you. That was sad, but let's continue. This is the bottom view of the box. Basically, all mobile phone boxes now look the same way. At the bottom of this box, you're going to see the IMEI number and all the other good stuff. This is the side of the box and this is the top. So again, boxes of mobile phones now are pretty generic. They, they generally look a lot like each other. There's really nothing important or special there to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump right into the unboxing. Now, while I'm unboxing this, there's a couple of things that I would like to address. Number one, I hear a lot of people asking if Xiaomi is a good brand. I've even seen questions on the internet asking if it's better than a Samsung phone or an iPhone. And if it is, why is it so cheap? Don't worry because all of those questions will be answered on this video. I'm not gonna try to be cute or try to be funny in this video. I'm here to give you all the facts that you need to know about this brand and particular phone models. Before we take a look at the actual phone though, let's go through the specs of the Redmi Note 10 first so we would know what to expect from the phone and at the same time have a basic understanding of the features and how the phone works. Now we are in GSM Arena's beautiful website to take a look at the specifications of the Redmi Note 10. I'll be scrolling through their website so you could see all the information. Feel free to pause at any time so you could read at your own pace and get all the nitty gritty details that you want to take note of. With that said, I'm not going to go over each item under the main overview. Like I said, you can pause the video anytime time to read through the information. What I will do though is summarize everything that I feel is important for you to know based on the information I gathered on my research. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 was released on March 16, 2021. The Note 10 Pro followed 8 days later on March 24. It weighs 178.8 grams and is 8.3 millimeter thick. It has two variants in terms of internal storage, the 64GB and 128GB variant. And for external storage, micro SDXC cards can be used, which means you can add up to a whopping 2TB of additional storage space. For the display, it's 6.43 inches and has an 83.5% screen to body ratio. The resolution comes in full HD at 1080 by 2400 pixels and comes in a 20 by 9 ratio. The display type is Super AMOLED that can go up to 1100 nits, which basically means that you have 1100 candles clumped up in one square meter. The IP or ingress protection rating of the Note 10 is IP53. 5 meaning that it's dust protected but not dust tight so you still have to be careful. And 3 meaning it can withstand splashing water as long as it's in a 60 degree angle. Which means you can text in the rain if you already have to. The operating system pre-installed in the Note 10 is an Android 11 MIUI 12. The chipset is a Qualcomm SDM678 Snapdragon 11 nanometers. Let me give you a quick nerd tip, okay? 11 nm or nanometer stands for the size of the transistors on the chipset. The question is why does it matter? Now stay with me. In this day and age, the smaller the transistors you have on your processors and chipsets, the better it's going to perform. Since smaller transistors are more power efficient, they can calculate more compared to bigger transistors because they don't get too hot. And heat is a major factor in terms of CPU performance. This is why Apple's A12X chips with the 7 nanometer transistors are very, very fast. And the exact same reason why AMD has been beating Intel for quite some time now, it's because Intel uses 10 nanometer transistors while AMD uses 7. But I digress. Going back to the phone, this simply means that the Snapdragon 678 is a mid-level processor. Is it a bad thing? I don't think so. For the price point of this phone, around 10,000 pesos or less, you're getting a good deal here. One particular phone they compare to the Note 10 is the Samsung Galaxy M21, and the processor inside the Redmi Note 10 is virtually equal to the processor that the M21 has, yet it's around $70 more expensive. The Note 10 runs on an octa-core CPU, with 2 cores running on 2.2GHz Cryo 460 Gold and 6 cores running on 1.7GHz Cryo 460 Silver. So CPU-wise, it's in good shape for an all-around phone. GPU-wise, I can run faster than <laughs> the GPU. The Redmi Note 10 is running on a Qualcomm Adreno 612 GPU. It's a mid-tier GPU from 5 years ago. Enough said. 
Before we proceed with the camera, let me just point out that the Redmi Note 10 does not support 5G. Just something to think about just in case you're thinking of buying this phone, aside from the GPU of course. I'll talk more about the GPU later on. Now I'll take you back to GSM Arena while I'm talking about the camera. Their website has a cool feature wherein you can take a look at sample photos for whatever cell phone camera that you want to check out. So this is something that you might want to look at before buying your phone if you're after the camera quality. You can see how the cameras perform in low light, good lighting, etc. So do check this out and I'm going to show you sample pictures from the Redmi Note 10 while I talk about the camera. And now for the camera specifics. It has a main quad camera. First one is a 48 megapixel camera with an f-stop of 1.8 which comes with a 26 millimeter wide angle lens. It also has an 8 megapixel ultra wide 118 degree angle lens with an f-stop of 2.2 and a macro and depth camera both at 2 megapixels at an f-stop of 2.2. You can shoot both 4K and 1080p videos at 30 fps but with 1080p you can go as high as 60 fps. Features included in the main camera are the usual HDR, LED flash, and panorama. The selfie camera has the HDR feature as well and you can also shoot 1080p videos at 30 fps. The camera itself is a 13 megapixel camera with an f-stop of 2.5 and is also wide angled. I'm not gonna go too deep about the camera. If you want to learn more about cell phone cameras or cameras in general, watch my iPhone SE review. I discussed f-stops or aperture, other camera terminologies on that video as well. So if you have the time, watch it if you want to learn more. But what I can tell you right off the bat is the camera here is decent. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. There, there are other phones out there with better cameras, of course, but it's not always about the specs. You just have to understand how to use aperture, lighting, ISO, shutter speed, and, and you should be fine. If you're not a professional photographer shooting billboards, a 48 megapixel camera with a 1.8 f-stop is more than enough for you. You can take beautiful bokeh shots with this camera. You just have to learn how to play with it and use it. So right now I'm showing you the contents of the box. It comes with of course the mobile phone, the cell phone charger, and a Type-C cable. It also comes with the SIM card pin for the tray and a free cell phone case. The seller was also generous enough to include this free AKG earphones which is great since the Redmi Note 10 comes with a 3.5 millimeter jack for your earphones. Before I take the phone out of the protective plastic that we just talk about the battery real quick. So the battery on this phone is not a lithium-ion battery, the ones that explodes on airplanes. The Redmi Note 10 comes with a lithium polymer battery which is safer. Doesn't pack quite the punch that the lithium-ion batteries carry but this phone is designed for fast charging anyway so that balances it out. Here we go, first impressions of the phone. Right off the bat, I'm very impressed with the build quality of the phone. It's got a nice hefty weight to it, feels solid. The back is gorgeous, the white paint. It's it's kind of matte finished, it looks really nice, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip off my hand. It actually reminds me of a Samsung A71, though this one's a lot more attractive. I like the feel better, the fact that the back is non-slip, I love it. And one more thing that I love about mobile phones nowadays is they come pre-installed with screen protectors considering that this phone is actually protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3. It just gives that additional protection from scratches. This phone looks really nice. I want to show you as much detail as possible. Apologies for the bad lighting in the room. While the camera is focusing, let me tell you about the comms included on this phone. It has Wi-Fi or WLAN, Bluetooth, GPS, infrared port, radio, and of course the USB Type-C, but it doesn't have NFC. I read somewhere that in certain parts of Asia, they release the same model with NFC, but this one doesn't have it. This phone also comes with different sensor features such as fingerprint, accelerometer for choppy shake, proximity, gyroscope, and compass. Now while we're waiting for the phone to power on, I'm gonna go ahead and answer the three questions I mentioned earlier. The first question was, is Xiaomi a good phone or a good brand? The answer is yes, they are. They have established a good reputation, especially with their mobile phone products. I have seen a lot of great reviews from forums about them, and it's funny how they keep getting compared to high-end brands such as Samsung, LG, HTC, etc. Second question is, is it better than Samsung or Apple products? It is very difficult to measure what is the best at 
this point in time, in this generation, it will always depend on the need and whatever trend is striding the market. So I'll give you a non-hypocritical answer. If I have money in the bank, I'll tell you Apple is the best. Based on my experience, they have the best all-around phones. They're good at everything. Games, apps, they're very fast. Really, hands down, it's going to be Apple. But I don't have that money. So to me right now, the best would be something that I can afford. And in this case, although this phone isn't mine, I would consider Xiaomi as one of the best phones out in the market right now because of what I'm getting, the value I'm getting for the price that I'm paying. Which leads to the last question, why is it so cheap? And the answer to that is it's not cheap. It's just that people are comparing them to companies whose phone prices are off the charts, at least a thousand dollars. And that might not even be the best model with the highest capacity. Can you blame these companies? Absolutely not. And I'm going to tell you why. Apple has spent $18.8 billion on research and development. Samsung has paid $21.2 trillion Korean won for research and development. That's over $19 billion. Not to mention their ads. They pay a lot of money for their ads. Have you seen Samsung commercials? They pay world-class athletes Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Apple. I don't know what Apple is doing. Honestly, I hardly see any Apple commercial. The question now is where do these big names have their products made and the answer is China maybe not everything though some of the components are made in the Philippines Taiwan Thailand Malaysia wherever there are big factories and guess what companies like Xiaomi are putting the same parts that you have on your Samsung phone or any other Android phone or even your iPhone on their phones as well the only reason why they don't charge as much as Apple and Samsung and the other big wigs out there is because they don't have to pay for research and development and for ads They choose not to make ads. They choose not to invest on research and development because they have been copying the signs from these companies who's been asking them to make the phones for them. I'm very sorry for that long banter. I just needed to put it out there so people will understand why some companies charge lower than others. Having a more affordable price range doesn't always necessarily mean that you have bad products. Anyway... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the the camera is having a hard time capturing the image on the screen of the phone because the brightness is too high and I can't adjust it right now because I have to go through all the mumbo jumbo setting up the phone before I can toggle the settings. Now I'm finally done setting up the phone so we're just gonna test it out right now. Check how responsive it is. Gonna check the camera as well of course and the audio. So at this point I realized that my lavalier was acting up. My The mic on my camera was acting up. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to let you hear how the phone sounds like. It sounds great though. The stereo speakers on this phone is of great quality so very happy with that. I'm gonna try to see if I can at least extract a short clip for you guys so you could hear how the phone sounds like. For now I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of pictures since we can now see the phone screen much clearer through the camera. So here I'm just taking a picture from the main camera and then later on I'm gonna take pictures using the selfie camera. So I'll show you guys the samples in a bit. Please take note though that the lighting in my room is very bad. And during the time I was taking the pictures, I wasn't able to adjust the lighting. So the pictures that you're gonna see would not best represent the capability of the camera. But looking at the pictures right now, they actually look very decent considering the scenario. Let me go ahead and show you the sample pictures right now. I'm gonna flash them on the screen. And right after that, I'm going to let you hear the sound clip that I was able to save from the camera. Now, please take note that you're going to hear some crackling sounds. And that's from the lavalier on the camera and not from the Note 10. a perfectly warm meal. The lunchbox worked really well. 10 out of 10 would definitely be So that is it. That is the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10. So what rating will I give this phone for a 10,000 peso phone? I'll give it an 8 out of 10. That's a very strong 8 by the way. Konti na lang na And the reason behind it is because it's a good all-around phone. But it kind of lacks in terms of gaming capabilities. Most people play games so that's a bit of a bummer. Plus of course the absence of NFC and 5G capabilities makes it a bit weak in that regard. But nonetheless it's a very good solid phone. Who would I recommend this phone to? I would recommend this phone to students and casual gamers. If you're a heavy gamer, I would recommend that you go with the Realme 6S instead. So that's it for the video. I hope you liked it. I had fun with my research on Realme and this phone. I hope you had fun too. If you did, 
please hit like subscribe share with your friends hit the notification bell so you would receive alerts once i upload new videos thank you so much for watching guys catch you on the next video peace